The auto garage told me there are no codes in this car, but just to make sure, let's find out for ourselves. Let's see what we got. We got no fault code, so the auto garage was right. There are no codes in here. So let's take it from here. Which way should we go? We've got no codes to help us. What are we missing? Are we missing fuel? Are we missing compression? Um, the quickest way at this land you see it missing fuel is to add a little fuel ourselves. So uh, let's do that. I will put a little bit of brake clean in the intake and see if it will run. Let's find out. So I disconnected this turbo hose and I'm gonna put some propellant in it. In this case it is brake clean and it will be sucked into the intake, get into the cylinders and if it's getting no fuel, this will act as a fuel and the engine will run. So let's find out what it will do. So we added our fuel, it still won't run, so I don't think it's a fuel problem. So maybe it's mechanical, it's compression or timing, we're gonna find out. But uh, it cranked a little bit slow, so I think uh, it's a weak battery. So let's connect the battery charger first. Okay, the car was cranking a little bit weak, so uh, I connected the battery charger. The car was brought in from other garage, they uh, worked on it for many hours. So uh, maybe they started it a lot and the battery got a little bit weaker. So uh, trying to get rid of the problem right now. Um, we're leaning toward a timing compression problem right now. So the easiest way for me to find out if the timing is okay um, is to pull out the scope. So uh, let's do that. I've got the cam sensor and the crank sensor back probe here at the computer. Just because it's easy to get by the crank sensor is underneath the car, hard to get by, so we're doing it this way. Okay, let's see what it looks like. Back probing the crank and the cam sensor. Um, where do you get your information from? I'm very lucky, my scope comes with wiring diagrams, so uh, that's what we're using. Got my two channels set on the scope, one for crank and one for cam. Both sensors are Hall Effect sensors, so we're expecting something around 5 volts. So I've got my channel set at 8 volts. Let's crank it over. So these are our recorded waveforms. This is our crank sensor. And this is our cam sensor. From this point to this point is a full rotation of the crankshaft. And from this point to this point is a full rotation of the camshaft. So to determine the timing, we've got to take a point in the camshaft signal and compare it to a point in the crankshaft signal. So I'm taking this point over here and compare it to the rising edge of the signal over here. Let's zoom in on that. And now count the teeth. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven teeth in between the signal over here and the rising edge of the cam sensor over here. What do we know now? We know nothing because we don't know what it should look like. So let's compare it to a no good. Thanks to my friends at GMTO, I got a no good waveform for an N47 diesel engine. And this is what it looks like. This is our cam sensor signal. This is our crank sensor signal. Um, see that the crank sensor signal is above the cam sensor signal over here. It doesn't matter. They switch the channels opposite of what we did. Um, from here to here is a full rotation of the crankshaft and let's see from there to there a full rotation of the camshaft. So we used in our example this rising edge and compared it to this point over here. So let's do that. 
and count the teeth again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So exactly the same. So what have we got so far guys? We got no fault codes. Um, we don't think it's a fuel problem because adding fuel doesn't change our situation. Uh, it still won't run. Um, we check the timing. Though there are some variables, uh, this car only has got one camshaft signal and there are two camshafts, so we basically only check one camshaft, so let's keep that in mind. Um, we could still do a compression test, and we will, and maybe we should throw in an ejector signal and see if that signal is near top that center, so let's go that way. Okay, doing a relative compression test on this engine, uh, using our heavy duty amp clamp. Uh, don't forget to zero it. Put it around the main feed of the starter motor. Like that. Okay, I'm throwing in the ejector signal of ejector number one. And just to be sure, I want to see the signal around top that center. So I know the uh, timing of the injection is okay. So back probing the connector. Let's go. So this is our waveform of our relative compression test. The red line is showing the current being drawn by our starter motor. Um, when the piston moves up and moves into the compression, the starter motor is drawing more current to overcome this force. So basically, the tops are at top dead centers. Um, also threw in the signal of injector number one, so that should be almost in top that center, so let's see, move this up, and as you can see, it's spot on. So this is cylinder number one, so there are four cylinders, one, two, three, four, and then the whole cycle starts again. And you can see, we've got a compression issue. The compression is not the same throughout the cylinders, though the timing is spot on. I was thinking, guys, we did a relative compression test, and it showed differences between the cylinders, but there wasn't one cylinder missing or something. Uh, the differences weren't so big that this car shouldn't run, it really should run. We've got injector pulse, I think we've got fuel, because we added fuel, and it made no difference. Uh, we checked the timing, we checked it twice, one with the cam and the crank, and one time with the uh, relative compression and the injector signal. So uh, this car really should run. So I took another look at the relative compression test, and I noticed something, and I want to share it with you guys. Okay, looking at this waveform again, guys. Uh, we see there is some difference uh, between the cylinder compression, uh, but it really should run. Maybe it shouldn't run pretty, but it should run. Um, so I took a closer look and I noticed something. Uh, let's throw in a cursor here. The cursor is hitting the top of the waveform and it's reading over 600 millivolts. So, uh, Let's think about this for a second. Let's think about this. If we are uh, measuring current uh, with an amp clamp, we're not actually sending the amps uh, through our scope. Actually, the amps are going through this uh, device and it's sending a voltage to our scope. So that's why we are reading over 600 millivolts on the scope. And this particular amp clamp says one millivolt is one amp. So we were reading over 600 millivolts. So uh, that's over 600 amp, guys. And think about it. 
our starter motor over here is drawing more than 600 amps. How come? Okay guys, we know now that our starter motor is uh, drawing a lot of current and if it's drawing a lot of current it's trying to overcome some kind of force. Um, so uh, let's go to a low tech method and uh, trying to crank the engine over by hand and see what it feels like. Okay guys, connected to the crankshaft over here. Attempt to uh, manually uh, turn this engine over. So let's try. Yep. Guys, I'm not really a small guy, but uh, I think we found a problem. So I can turn this engine over and uh, I want to go a little bit further. I want to uh, remove these injectors and try again. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is get these uh, high pressure lines off. Straightforward job. So that's one down, three to go. Okay, remove the high pressure lines, disconnected the connectors. There's one uh, screw holding it down. Okay, removing it. There's a clamp holding in the injector down, and we can pull the injector out. So uh, let's do the other three. Okay, got all my injectors removed, so uh, we can't have compression anymore because the compression can vent via the injector holes right now. If you look in this hole, you can uh, look on top of the, the piston actually. So uh, I will try my second attempt to turn the engine over. Get my tool there. And guys, I still cannot turn the engine. So uh, let's think about it. So uh, I can hear you guys think the starter motor was able to turn the engine, so you should be able to turn the engine. So I uh, took my man tool and uh, try it again. Okay. And guys, I actually am able to turn this engine with a bigger tool, but it's far too heavy. This is not normal. This is our problem. Well, let's think about this one, guys. Um, remember in the beginning of the diagnose, I said it looked like the uh, battery was weak and I connected the battery charger. Well, actually it wasn't, okay? It was a brand new battery. The previous garage already installed a brand new battery and even the starter motor was replaced. Another thing learned today, guys, is that uh, it's called a relative compression test. And actually we're just measuring the current through the starter motor. And uh, there are things that can influence the current through a starter motor like we saw today so keep that in mind okay guys as I told you I don't really know the history on this car uh, I did notice that at some point the oil pan was removed because there's red sealant between the oil pan and that's not something original uh, I really hope you enjoyed my video if you did please like it subscribe to my channel Diagnose Dan see you next time